Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to update the Django weather app that I created a little over a year ago. So people have told me that there are some problems with this app. So in this video, I want to address some of those problems. All right, so there are three main things that I want to work on today. The first is preventing duplicate cities from being added to the list. So as we can see now, we have five different cities. But if I add the same city again, so let's say I want to add Tokyo again. I can't. So I see Tokyo here and here. So I don't want to be able to do that. Second, I want to prevent invalid cities from being added because when that happens, the API doesn't work correctly because it can't find the city. So if I just type in some random characters like this and hit add city, then I get this error page because the city wasn't found. And then finally, I want to have some kind of delete button so I can remove cities after they've been added. So first, let me correct the two errors that I just created. So I'll go into the database and this is the exact same code that I started off with in or I ended off with in the previous video. So if you aren't familiar with that code, you can watch that video first and then this video picks up where that video left off. So uh, let's see tables. I want to find the weather city table. And then I want to remove Tokyo and that other one. So delete from uh, weather city where ID equals seven. And I also want to delete six. Okay, so now if I start the server again, the app should be working because that invalid city is gone. Okay, so now the first thing that I want to do is prevent uh, duplicate cities from being added. So what I'm going to do is here in the if statement. So this view function has a very simple if statement. So if this is a post request, it basically just creates the form from the city data that was passed from the form itself and then saves it. So before I can do anything else, I need to add the is valid. So in the first video, I wanted to just briefly show you how the API works. But in this video, I'll make it a little bit better. So in that case, I'll use form is valid. It's always going to be valid because the form is very simple, but I need that so I can get access to the clean data. So what I mean by that is I'll create a variable called new city. And this new city is going to have the data of the city that the user added here on the front end. So whatever city they type in here is going to be in the clean data if the form is valid. So form .cleaned data and then the name of the field is name. So it gets added to new city. So what I want to do to prevent a duplicate city from being added is I want to query the database and I want to make sure there are no cities with that name already, because if that name exists, that means it's already in the database and I don't want to add it again. So I'll write a simple query. So I'll take the city model that I have. So I imported it from models and then objects filter name is a uh, new city and I just want to get the count. So we'll say uh, existing city count. And basically if this existing count is zero, then I know the city doesn't exist and I can add it. But if it's more than zero, so one in the case where you don't already have duplicate cities, then you know that that city already exists and then you don't want to add it. So what I'll do for this is I'll say, uh, if existing city count is zero, then go ahead and save the form just like that. So one thing I can do is I can add some kind of error message. So I'll create a variable here called error message and it starts off empty. And if the city count is greater than one, then I can say something like city already exists in the database. So what I meant to say, if the city count is greater than zero, not greater than one, because if it's greater than one, that means two cities already exist, or you're trying to add a third city. But if it's greater than zero, then that means um, the city already exists. So I just add this simple error message for the city already exists in the database. So right now the error message won't do anything, but this existing city count will. So if I go back to the app and refresh, and I try to add Tokyo again, add city, it won't do it. So it doesn't give me any feedback that it's not adding it, but we see it's not being added to the list again. So if I try Tokyo again, 
nothing happens. But if I try a new city, let's say London, then we see London appears. So we know the duplicate city check is working. So the next thing I want to do is I want to check to see if a city actually exists somewhere in the world. So if you type in something invalid like this, that's not a city that exists anywhere as far as I know. So what I want to do is I want to use the API itself to check to see if that city exists. If it does exist, then I can go ahead and add it. And if it doesn't exist, then I want to return some other error message. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the API again. So here is the use of the API when I'm actually building the page. So that's where the values here come from. But if I want to find out if a city exists, what I want to do is I want to query for that city in the API and then get the response value. So to do that, I'm going to put this request uh, inside of the existing city count. So this is going to be another thing that needs to be done if the city doesn't already exist. So here, and then instead of having city for that variable, it's going to be new city. So this R is going to return the data for the city that gets added. So what I want to do with R is I want to check to see if R has a particular status code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print R and we'll see what it looks like on the terminal here. So I'll restart the app and refresh. And first I'll start by adding a valid city. So a valid city, let's say Dallas. Okay, so I see Dallas and here is the response from the API. And what I'm looking for is the COD. So this is a status code and 200 means that the city has been found. Now let's try an invalid city and see what happens. So I'll type in that, hit add city. Of course the app breaks again, but if I look at the data that gets returned, I see COD equals 404. So basically what I want to do is I want to check to see if the code is 200. If it is 200, then I can go ahead and add the city. If it's anything else, then I don't want to add the city. So let me go ahead and remove that invalid city from the database because it was just added again. So uh, select star from weather city. And then I want to delete from weather city where ID equals 10. Okay and then I should be able to run my app again without any errors. And we see that city isn't there. So what I want to do is I want to check if that COD is 200. So if R and then COD equals 200, then I can go ahead and save. And then if it's something else, then I want to set the error message. So in this case, I'll say city, does not exist in the world. And I can remove this print statement. So now, and let's try printing the error message so we can see some feedback while we're working on this. So I'm printing the error message here and I'll refresh the app and I'll type in an invalid city, hit add city. It doesn't get added, my app doesn't crash, but we see here in the console, city does not exist in the world. So we know that is working correctly. So now that I have this error message, what I can do is I can add in some messages for the user so they know when they add a city successfully or when uh, something bad happens. So what I'll do is I'll create a variable called message, and this is going to hold a message that the user sees. And then I'll also create something called message class. So this is going to hold a CSS class for the color of the message area that I'll eventually create. So to set this up, basically inside of this if statement for the post request, I'll say, you know, if the error message exists, then I want the message to be the error message and I want the message class to be equal to is danger. So this is just a Bulma class. So I'll get to that in a moment. And then if there is no error message, then the message is going to be a uh, city added successfully should be two L's and then message class is going to be uh, is success in this case. Okay, so now that I have that, I wanna pass those two things to the template. So uh, let me change how the context is formatted a little bit. 
Okay, so now I want to add the message in the message class to the context. So message and then message class. Just like that. Okay, so those two additional values are being passed to the template. So now I can open up the template, go to weather.html, and I'll add a little section for the message. So let's see. I'm looking for the form. So this is a little too low. Okay, so here's the form. And I want to add it inside of the form. And basically what I'm going to do is just put like a little notification box directly underneath the input for the form and we'll see it here. So I'll start with an example. So div, um, let's see, notification and some message. And it also needs like the color. So is success. All right, so if I refresh, we see some message there. And if I change this to is danger, then it will turn red. My server is taking forever to restart today. Let me manually restart it. Okay. Okay, so we see the is danger message there. So now that I have that, what I want to do is say basically like if there is a message to display, because I don't want to display this when nothing has happened. So let's see, if message, then I'll display this block. So now when I go to the page again, it should disappear. And then I want to put the actual message in here. So this is going to be message. And I can't type the right character. There we go. And then I want to put the class as well. So message class. Okay, so now let's try running the app. So what I'll do is I'll type in an invalid city, hit add city, and it's going to tell me that that city does not exist. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll add a duplicate city. So Tokyo again. And then we're going to see that Tokyo already exists in the database. So city already exists in the database. And finally, if I add a new city, uh, a new city, Let's say Shanghai, I think I spelled that correctly. City added successfully and we see it here at the bottom of the list. So those were the things I wanted to do to cover the errors. So one last thing I wanna do is allow the user to delete these cities after they've been added. So I'll start by adding a little delete button inside of the boxes, so here inside of the article, it's a media object. I'm gonna add a media right. So media right, and it's gonna have a button. So let's see what that looks like. And this button needs to be a link. So started off by not sending the link anywhere in particular close it and let's see if it looks like how I want it to look like. So we see here we have these little delete buttons in each box. So I can click those. They don't do anything yet, but that's what I'll be working on. So to delete, basically what I want to do is I want to pass the city to this delete link and then something happens. So I'll create another view in my app and I'll call this like delete city. And this is going to take in the request and some city name. And then I know I want to redirect to the index route when I'm done. So first I need to know what the name of this route is and I need to import um, redirect. I need to know what the name of the view is. Um, and then I want to go to the URLs. So this has no name, so I'll say name is home. So I'm going to redirect home. Okay, and then I wanna add this URL. So we'll say 
path uh, delete. It's going to take in a city name. And then this is views. Oh, wait. OK, so views.delete. And we'll give this name um, delete city. Is it delete or delete city? Yes, delete city. So delete city is the view name. Okay, so then if I go to my template, what I can do is I can add a URL. So URL is going to be for delete city, and the value that gets passed in is going to be the city name. So if I take the city weather object here and just get the city from it, that should work. So city weather dot city. Okay, so let's see if the links have the correct values in them. So I see at the bottom left, Los Angeles, Tokyo, and the rest. And of course, if I click one, nothing's going to happen. It doesn't delete the city because I haven't added any code to delete the city yet. So I can close the URLs. And all I need to do here is query for the city and delete it. So I can do uh, city objects get and then city name. So I'm getting because I know the city exists already. And the city name is going to be, or this is backwards. So this should be name equals city name. And then I'll just call delete on it. And then I'll redirect the user to home. And when they redirect, they shouldn't see the city anymore. So let's try this. Now let's delete Los Angeles. And now Los Angeles is gone. Let's delete Las Vegas. Las Vegas is gone. Dallas. Dallas is gone, Shanghai, Shanghai is gone, and so on. So it's a pretty simple thing to set up, but we see that by clicking on the link, the city goes away because it's getting removed from the database. And then when the page, when the page reloads again, it doesn't have that city to pick up in the query, so nothing gets rendered for it. So those are the things that I wanted to cover in this video because a lot of people were asking me to talk about those things. So I hope this video helps. Of course, this app can be extended even further. The code can be made better. Um, there can be more functionality at it. So let me know what you think, what you think would be a good extension for this if I were to make another video on it. If you have any questions on this video, feel free to let me know. So if you have any ideas, like I said, let me know. Um, as far as learning more about Django, if you want, you can go to my website. And there are a couple of courses that I have for Django, so prettyprinted.com. And you can check out the Understanding Django course or the Django Database Essentials course. So check out those two courses on my website, um, and hopefully you join. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.